You know, every once in a while, a product comes around, one that doesn't brag, doesn't scream or shout, but instead it shows up for work and it simply does the job. A blue collar hero, if you want, a device you don't expect much from at first. I'm talking about the Microsoft Surface Pro here, the smallest of the surfaces to date, the 12 inch, the one that got very little attention online and the one I'm here to talk about. In my mind, the ideal recipe for a great product lies in quite a few ingredients, which if mixed just right, can result in something worthy of a Michelin star. And when it comes to tablets, or more specifically two-in-ones, those ingredients are a handful. Good design and portability, decent power and long battery life, work and entertainment shoes to fill, versatile software, something I call a wow factor, and of course the ability to feel just natural as a tablet as it does as a laptop, pen included. And all of that while still managing to come at a reasonable price. Let's just be honest, that's a high bar. So let's break it down. When it comes to portability, the 12 inch size is very much a unicorn. You know, it reminds me of the 11 inch MacBook 11. Air of the past. Inch. Even smaller. A rare breed that strikes a unique yet perfect balance. It feels far more substantial than the 11 inch iPad Pro, for example, yet so much more portable than the 13 inch iPad Pro with its magic keyboard and stuff. In that regards, the Surface Pro 12 carries like almost nothing in the backpack or sling, even with the redesigned keyboard permanently attached. And that says a lot when compared side by side with Apple's 11 inch. On top of that, having reviewed the last three generations of Surface Pros, this is the first Microsoft tablet that truly feels premium all around. It's fanless now, and from the softly rounded corners to the chamfered edges and the perfectly even bezels, its design belongs in the premium category for sure, with only a few compromises which I'll be sure to point out down the line. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? So the spec that I purchased is the second option in the tier, which at no surprise to me is out of stock on the official website, featuring the Snapdragon X Plus processor, 16GB of unified memory, and 512GB of internal storage, and for that, for the first time in my Surface Pro experience, I got a tablet slash laptop that doesn't blow hot air in my face, has plenty of power to do casual work, and lasts pretty much an entire day with some juice left without breaking a sweat. Surely, the fact that it runs Windows reminds me of itself with some here and there random forms of warm up for no apparent reason, but nothing that can cause worry or discomfort. Being able to hook it up to an external monitor, no matter if it's 4K, 5K or 6K, doesn't raise any concerns either. It works as expected and it does most of the things I throw at it with flying colors. Whether I'm working on a video thumbnail, editing a photo, writing, browsing, or just playing a casual game, it's the quietest surface I've ever used, and it gets the job done without any unnecessary drama. I'm not sharing benchmarks here, because to me, they are irrelevant. What matters is that this is more than a capable computer that handles everything I expect from it, and when it's time to be something else, a tablet, it does that too. Now, it doesn't have the finesse of the iPad Pro, for example, because at the end of the day, it's Windows. You know, it takes a moment to rotate into portrait mode, it might throw the occasional tantrum with the virtual keyboard, and of course, it would ask to be restarted because of an update more times than you'll ever turn off the iPad in its lifespan. But those annoyances aside, 99% of the time, it's a great tablet. I can watch movies and shows anywhere, and at 12 inches, it feels just right. Manageable, comfortable to hold, even one-handed thanks to the rounded corners and a bit of a curvature, and never awkward on a lap or a tray table. And unlike 5mm thin tablets out there, the additional girth and you know, thicker bezels are actually a win in my book because it feels confident in the hands. On top of that, it has the signature Surface Kickstand, so I don't need to rely on extra accessories to prop it up and make it usable. Even if I bought it as is, I could still pair it with my own peripherals or simply dock it 
and get work done. In its smallest form and bare bones, this tablet manages to feel complete. Now, this little sound preview might not have relayed the full picture here, but in my mind, it is very comparable to something like an 11-inch iPad Pro, maybe closer to the 13, but nowhere near something like a MacBook. That being said, it's plenty loud. Perhaps a section of this packaging that isn't all that spectacular is the display, which is IPS and not OLED or mini LED, but I wouldn't rush to call it, you know, a compromise that much because it's plenty vivid and sharp and clearly visible from various angles. Now, the issue here for the most part is the lamination and the immersiveness that is missing. You know, getting that pop of colors being right up there on the surface of the surface, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That and the brightness, which, uh... hey, at least it's 90 hertz, not 60, which is something that needs to be enabled from the settings. While being truthful, what I would have liked to see like in the past is the rear latch door for the upgradable SSD. This is no longer an option here. And what you order on the website is pretty much what you get. In my case, that's 512 gigs. I would have wished to be able to upgrade to one terabyte, but hey, it is what it is. The wow factor I mentioned earlier is a term I use for that little spark you get when a device feels magical when simply picking it up makes you want to use it and the surface pro has that it's beautifully built compact without feeling compromised and it runs a full-blown operating system that gives me peace of mind the ipad still can i know i can take this little machine home and if something work related comes up i'd be able to handle it it's got wi-fi 7 two usb-c ports bit slow but still a pen that doesn't fall off when tossed in a bag and a battery I just forget about. I can sketch, hop on a call with the built-in camera, scan a document, play a game, watch a movie, sign a document, or drop it into a full desk setup. And that to me is just awesome. Now the Microsoft Surface Store might not be as rich as Apple's App Store, but I'm not concerned because whatever might be missing, I can for the most part replace with web apps. Now, some apps like Superlist or, for example, YouTube Music don't have native apps on Windows. And this is where web apps come in very clutch. To create a web app, it needs to be done via the Edge browser. And it all happens super simple. All I have to do is tap on this little icon and I can install it as a web app. And once I do that, it will appear as a much cleaner version, which very much feels like a native app. So it is available in the start menu and of course, I can grab that, oops, I can grab that and just place it for quick access, let's say here, and boom. That being said, there are plenty of cool Windows apps worth checking out, and some of them I pointed out in my latest favorite apps episode, which I'll link at the end of this video. Listen, at the end of the day, this is Windows, not a baby version of it. So unlike, you know, the tablet competition out there, whatever is not available on Microsoft Store can be found outside. I've always been a fan of Microsoft's carpenter style slim pens. Now they might not quite reach the precision of the Apple Pencil, but here it attaches with a firmness unlike any other magnetic accessory I've used. Knowing I can just pry it off whenever inspiration strikes, whether to jot something down, sketch or quickly sign a document feels effortless. And it makes up for the gap in precision with thoughtful touches, subtle haptic friction feedback, an eraser that actually feels like one, and a button that's placed so I can be, you know, triggering it by accident. Ignoring the German layout, this new generation Slate keyboard is actually a very well thought out accessory too. The design is flipped, felt on the outside, which is the right call, and more traditional plasticky finish on the inside that should hold up better over time. Small details make a difference here, like the retractable magnetic lip that lets the keyboard wrap tightly around the surface when closed. In fact, it clings so hard that I sometimes struggle pulling it apart. It no longer has a slot for the pen, nor does it raise at an angle the way the old one did, but that's just totally fine. Just like before, not having the computer on the bottom when in lap mode is so cool for the legs. Literally, 
and the fact that it's great to type on is clutch. The trackpad is plenty big considering the size here and it's solid too. Thankfully the entire slate shuts off when I flip it around to use the surface as a tablet, sparing me the need to look for a place to, you know, put it aside. My only real wish is that it supported Bluetooth so I can, you know, use it detached. So, combined with the keyboard, the Surface really shines as a laptop too. The detachable design here still makes it a little iffy when used in a lap compared to a traditional laptop, leaving some grooves if wearing shorts for example. But the smaller form factor and the little retractable magnetic lip of the keyboard makes this little guy surprisingly agile and comfortable in a lap position. Now considering what this package offers, the thoughtful design all day battery life and a fully fledged operating system, we're talking about a starting price of around seven to 800 bucks depending on storage. As of this episode, I found my 512 variant with the Slate keyboard on Best Buy combo package for $1,008. Add the Microsoft Slim Pen, 1107. Just for perspective, you can get the 11 inch iPad Pro with 512 gigabytes of storage at the same price without any accessories. Add the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard and the price becomes 1627 To me, the only real competitor here when it comes to value is perhaps the baseline MacBook Air or the opt-in storage one, which at 512 gigabytes is roughly the same price here. But we are stepping firmly into laptop category where a touchscreen is no longer on the table. And of course, you can't do this. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out the most powerful two-in-one I tested recently, a gaming rig that pretends to also be a tablet. The video is right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.